Welcome to micro communication course. Today we see that a measurement of a BSWR. So how to measure the BSWR? So that we'll see today. So BSWR is nothing but what the standing view ratio. And why the standing view pad standing view occurs if supposed to be your device is not mismatching. Okay, the the device is not matched. And because of that, a mismatch occur across this device. So there will be reflection occur. And that reflected signal and a forward signal, both are superimposed on each other. So that's why a standing view occur. Now here, a slotted line section, or we can say that a standing view detector is used to measure that what will be the standing view occur in the given device. So for that purpose, a standing view detector is used here. Now in a VSWR measurement, so that VSWR measurement has a two types. One is about a low VSWR measurement and a high VSWR measurement. In the case of a low VSWR measurement, if a VSWR is a low, that is the range below 10, so then that is called as a low VSWR. And if that VSWR is a high, that is above 10, then it is called as a high VSWR. So now for the low VSWR measurement, small mismatch occur at the device, or we can say that your load, so that we can measure the low VSWR. So in a practical lab, if you consider that a small component, it is mis it is match generally, but there is a small VSWR because small reflection occur if we connect any component there. So that from this particular device, we can measure a low VSWR there. So the, that's why we supposed to consider that a general any device is to be terminated. Okay, so we consider that the bench, micro bench is to be terminated with a device under test. So for that particular purpose, we supposed to measure the low VSWR there. Now the source uh, that setup for this VSWR measurement is same. We have a source. Generally, we use a reflex liston as the source, and for the given reflex liston, we use a one kilohertz of a signal here. Okay, that is about a one kilohertz signal we supposed to provide to the source there. Then we have the one kilohertz source means what? It is your signal is a modulated here. Your signal propagating through this guide or through this component and it is a modulated and that modulated with a one kilohertz of a signal frequency that is a square wave signal now here we have the reflex liston is used and that reflex liston is a modulated output that is about one kilohertz signal is propagating through it then after that after the source immediately after the source isolator is used the role of the isolator to avoid the reflection come from the load reach towards the a source there okay so that is about it isolation between the load and a source there. then an alternator generally alternator is used to provide that particular minimum bswr and maximum VSWR. generally we say that a low bswr that is about a 10 below 10 okay so that's why we supposed to provide a signal propagating through the device that is about a alternator one so that will get the low bswr then after that, a slotted line section or a standing wave detector. A slotted line section, it has a slot. Okay, as we have seen that yesterday, for a slotted line section, this it has a slot. And through that slot, your tunable probe is connected there. Okay, that is about it, a slotted. And this tunable probe is connected to the VSWR. Okay, so that is about what we can say that a slotted wave section, small slot is there. Through that slot, that tunable probe is inserted inside the slot here and that probe is just may measure whatever the maximum value occur okay or maximum intensity or maximum power through the wave okay that can be calculated now here we say that is slot section or we can say that is standing wave detector then that slot that probe is connected to the vswr meter and on a vswr meter we will get directly the vswr value 
So if supposed to be, it is about a low VSW. So any device under test is connected, and then we will measure the low VSW. And after that device under test, there is a match termination or a, a match load. Okay, means no reflection from this. But there is a small reflection through the device, so that is to be measured through the VSW meter. So that is about a low VSW. On a VSW meter, there are a different scale. One scale is about a normal scale. It uh, provides you the VSWR from 1 to 10 there. Okay, so in that case, that directly that uh, VSWR will get here through the 1 to 10 value. So for that purpose, how to measure that? So in that case, on a VSWR meter, there is a gain control knob. And we can say that our voltage control knob is there. Okay, that two knobs are there. Okay, gain control knob there. Now uh, we consider that initially we need to set VSWR meter at a high value. Okay, maximum value. Maximum means it is about a 1. In terms of a dB, if supposed to be you consider that a dB scale, then there will be a 0 dB VSWR. Okay, so if you consider that a gain control knob or a value of a VSWR meter, so that will be a 1. Okay, adjust the 1 and then move the plotted section probe carriage towards the source and then you find out that what will be the value occur at some particular minima there. Okay, so even initially we have to adjust at a 1 and then deflect that plotted section line so that we will get the VSWR there. So that VSWR value is about a, a 1. So, consider that a probe generally, we supposed to consider that whatever the TMI level probe is to be adjusted at the maximum position. And maximum position means what? If we, on a VSWR meter, that pointer will show, okay, that is to be shown here, if supposed to be, you consider that scale. So, it starts from the 1 to the 10 now. Okay, likewise, this one is the scale. So, whatever the deflection pointer we have, that pointer is to be set at a maximum, that is at a 1. Okay. Either moving the slot section probe carry that tunable probe is to be moved to our source or a generator to adjust the one, or we can use that again gain, gain control knob that is used to move the pointer toward the one here. And then once we got the maximum, or once we got the one here on the slot section, then then move the probe to the minimum. Okay, and then. Move the probe to the minimum means what? This deflection will be what? In the range of 1 to 2, 1 to 10. Okay, that is about the minimum position. And note down that whatever the VSW value we are getting. And that is about what we can say that a VSW value directly we are getting through the VSW meter. So there are the two, three different scales. One is about normal scale. Second scale is about expanded scale. And then another is about a DB scale. So you can use the three different scale, normal scale, scale, expanded scale, or a DP scale. But if you are going to use that a uh, that what can say DB scale there, so then a gain control knob is there. So when we are moving the or rotating that gain control knob, for is supposed to be position one, then we need to multiply with a ten. If it is to be two, then it is to be multiply with a twenty. Okay, so likewise. So directly we'll get the gain in a DB there, but we need to consider that a gain control knob position is at one, two, or whatever the position, and that is to be multiplied with a respective number so that you will get the exactly VSWR meter, VSWR value. So that is about a low VSWR measurement. Then for the high VSWR measurement, we consider that if we consider the device under test, so we'll not get a maximum mismatch. So instead of that a device under test. Okay, we supposed to consider that device under test means we supposed to use. Okay, directly we say that then device under test means what any component. So here we consider that a sliding screw tuner. Okay, that is about sliding screw tuner that is to be connected here, and that sliding screw tuner that will provide the maximum mismatch. Okay, that is will provide a maximum mismatch so that we'll get the high VSWR value that is above a, a 10 year. 
So now, if supposed to be considered that any general device other than this slide fluid tuner, so then maximum mismatch will not be possible. So in that case, in a laboratory, we supposed to use a sliding screw tuner to get the high value of a VSWRF. Now, if supposed to be this one is a large mismatch, and but a VSWR meter is providing the scale in terms of 1 to 10, then how we are measuring that a VSWR value? Okay, so in that case, we supposed to consider that a sliding screw tuner and there will be a maximum mismatch occur and then then a slotted section we supposed to be considered this one slotted section to find out the a minima instead of a maxima there we supposed to find out the a minima there but before that we consider that initial case when we are working on the high vsw measurement initially we need to adjust the maximum position on the vsw orbiter that is a one or a pointer on a one point so using a gain control knob or, you, or we can move a tunable probe to adjust the first maxima there. Okay. Now, once we adjust the maxima, then we'll get that a uh, that VSWR value is about a 1. And, okay, how that value 1? We need to vary the gain control now or we need to vary this slotted section probe carrier. So, that will get the, we need to adjust the value of a VSWR will be 1. Next, we need to find out a minima there. Okay, we need to find out a, a minimum point. So now how to find out this minimum point? So minimum point means what? We have to move the slotted section, that tunable probe, toward the generator or toward the load. Okay, toward the source or toward the load. And then we will get one minimum point. Okay, and that minimum point where we are getting the minimum point, we not need to note down that minimum point, okay? Or we need to note down that at minimum point means what value of a V minimum occurs. Okay, we need to adjust that or we need to find out where we are getting the where value of that VSWR is about V, a minimum one. Okay, so in that case, we need to find out the minimum point in a, if we consider that a VSWR meter, we can find out the V minimum point. Or if you are using a CRO directly instead of a VSWR meter, if you put con consider the CRO here, so you will get the square wave form and that maxima and minima you can see easily there through the CRO. But there is a problem of a maximum point. So it's why we are using a minimum point? Okay, so because in a high VSWR, so two maxima or two minima distance is a large there. So that's why we could not get directly that a two minima point. Okay, in a if we because it's large on a slotted section probe carriage, that slot or that particular scale is a very very small. Okay, so in that particular scale, in the given particular scale, so it is difficult to find a maxima two maxima point or a two minima point using the this slot effect. So that's why we consider that first measure that where we are getting the minima there. Okay, once we got the minima point, okay, then we supposed to measure the it is at particular what what particular value we are getting the a eh, minimum point. And then then that we need to set that particular point is supposed to be called as a D1 there. Now from this particular minima point we need to calculate that a distance between the a two minima two points here okay so here we consider that either we use a voltage here or we supposed to consider that a major the vswr using a directly a value here okay so consider that here we supposed to measure the voltage here okay in of that so we need to find out a first minima. So wherever we are getting the first minima, so note down that particular point. Okay, supposed to be, I am saying that this one is about a D minimum now. Okay, this one is about a D minimum. So that is about a distance on the standing row detector or a slot section probe carry. 
so where we are getting the first minimum we need to note down that value okay so that is about what we can say that a minimum value the case here we say that this one is about a v minimum now note down the v minimum value and then find out find out a 3 db point here 3 db point means what a half power point so means what we can say that a root 2 of a v minimum because it is a voltage so instead of a 3 db here we say that a voltage there so we supposed to find out a root 2 of a v minimum here now these are the points here we are getting the a under root 2 v minima here and this particular point is supposed to be called as a d1 and a d2 okay so now we need to find a v minimum first where we are getting the v minimum note down that particular distance that is a d minimum distance and then then what happened once we got the v minimum there then move the slotted section probe carrier toward the load toward the load so that we'll get the another half power point or we can say that root to v minimum point and we need to move that the slotted section probe carriage that probe carriage toward the a source there that tunable probe toward the source then we'll note down the another point that's about a d1 so we'll get that a d1 and d2 point and then from the value of a d1 and d2 we can calculate the a vsw so what is the vsw vsw is equal to the value of vsw is equal to what a lambda g by pi d1 minus d2 okay this one we are getting the lambda this these are d1 and d2 these are the d1 and d2 okay here these are the d1 so now how to calculate the lambda g so now to calculate the lambda g then we need to replace the termination okay here so in the given setup so we need to replace the termination with a this one is to be replaced by the short circuit here okay we need to replace this termination instead of that a sliding screw tuner or a mass load here so we supposed to consider that a what we can say here a short this one will be a short once we connect a short here then we are able to measure the a two minimum point okay so that that's why we can say that lambda g is equal to twice of a two minimum point okay that is about a distance between the that whatever the two consecutive minima okay twice of d1 minus d2 so in the is of that we can say that x1 minus x2 okay uh, yesterday we have seen that so when we connect a short here to make the so that we'll get the two minimum point and that two minimum point is nothing but x1 and x2 so that twice of that distance we will get the a guide wavelength okay that is the body guide wave so that guide wavelength if you put here in the equation of a vsw vsw is equal to lambda g by pi so lambda g we will get that through the short and then d1 and d2 we are getting that d1 and d2 using this v minimum point and from this particular v minimum point we will locate that a d1 and d2 there so that we will calculate the vsw so that is about a high vsw measurement okay so now we have seen the same earlier so in this case so for the frequency measurement in a frequency measurement we have consider that a short and that short is used to measure the a frequency now the same thing is there that is about a guide wavelength so what is the guide wavelength that guide wavelength is to be used guide wavelength this one how to find out the guide wavelength to so connect the short after a slot restriction probe carriage connect the short and then on if this particular slotted line move the probe toward the load or move the probe probe toward the generator any other and then find out a successive two minima if supposed to be we are moving the probe toward the source then we find out the two successive minima one minima another minima likewise so how it is so it's simple simple from the load here if supposed to be we are connecting a short okay this was supposed to be a short now so then what happen here if you connect the short so we'll get that a minima here okay so likewise you you have your form so this one we say that a first minima and another minima so this one is called as x1 and x2 
So distance between that x1 and x2 successive minima, that is nothing but what we can say that twice of that particular distance is nothing but a, a guide value. So here we will get that a BSWR. Now next we consider a another measurement that is about a, a phase shift measurement. Okay. So next measurement we consider here that is about the a measurement of a, a phase shift. Measurement of a phase shift Okay, this one we are supposed to be consider here. So for that purpose we are supposed to use here a source. Okay, we consider that a source first. That source again we consider that it has a one kilohertz of a modulation there, modulation signal. Okay, this one is about a one kilohertz there. We consider that it has a one kilohertz of a modulation signal. Okay, then a isolator. Okay, after that we consider here. H plane T, okay. This one is about H plane T, H T here. We consider, and then we consider here attenuator. Then device under test here the same. Attenuator and then here stop it device under test. We calibrate it. Precision. Phase shifter. Okay. This one is about a calibrated precision phase shifter. And then again, we consider that H plane T, okay, here, this one. And then after that, we have a plot restriction or a standard gauge detector. Okay, this one is plot restriction, standard gauge detector. Then we have a, we consider here a CRO. The tunable probe is connected to the CRO, and then this one is about a match termination, empty match the termination. So now, if you consider here, that is about a measurement of a phase shift. As you know that earlier, here we consider that a H plane T. Okay, the role of H plane T is what? If you consider the E plane T, then what happened? that whatever the port we have, okay, port 1 and a port 2, if supposed to be are giving the input to the port 3, output at a port 1 and port 2 will be same, but it is about the out of phase. But in the case of a H plane T, if you are providing the input to the port 1, port 3 here, the output will be divided equally with a same phase. Okay, now the same principle here, we supposed to be using a H plane. And again, again another thing, S plenty, it is act as a divider, as well as S plenty will be act as a combiner. If supposed to be, we are providing the input at a port one and a port two, then output will be combined at a, a port three there. Okay, so that is called as a, a, a combiner. Now here it is used as a this one S plenty here. It is to be used as a, a divider, and here it is to be used as a, a combiner. Okay, so and again. If you consider that in a setup, here we consider that a calibrated precision phase shifter here. Okay, calibrated precision phase shift. Then device under test. So what this device under test means what? 
when we are inserting a device in a setup so through that device so what will be the phase change occur so to find out that whatever the phase change occur so for that purpose we supposed to use it a device under test okay so that is about a device under test so this one we supposed to consider that your a setup here so initially if you consider that for a given particular signal that is a source is about a 1 kilo of a modulated here so means reflex is on it has a 1 kilo of a modulated signal the modulated signal is supposed to be propagating through the isolator here this one is about isolator and after that isolator there will be a h plane t and the role of that h plane t it divide the signal equally in a port 1 and port 2 this one is about a input is at a port 3 and port 1 and a port 2 okay so this one is about what we can say that when we supposed to provide the signal to the port 3 here then your power will be equally divided in port 1 and a port 2 with a same phase equal amplitude and a phase okay that is about a equal divide okay that is about it it act as a divider so this one is act as what we can say that a divider now then then we have a same signal is propagating through the device under test again as well as the precision phase shifter now when that signal is propagating through the device under test if supposed to be any phase change occur then what happened when we are combining these two signal after device under test and a precision phase shifter so when we combine here using this h plane t so then because of that mismatch in a phase the output across the CRO, if you see that is on a CRO, there will be a uh, that will not get that a combined output properly there. Why? Because when we combine that particular signal that is propagating through the device under test, as well as that a particular your phase shifter there, so then we can display that output on the CRO there. If supposed to be there is a phase shift produced by this device then whatever the two signals are there that propagating from the device under test as well as this first shifter that will not be added here so that's why no output can be seen on the CR because there is a small variation in the phase okay so in that case if we use that a precision phase shifter in such a way that so you will get that output will be added here okay so now how much is the we shifting this particular okay calibrated precision phase shifter we supposed to be move the knob here and then adjust the phase of the signal which signal here we suppose this one through the device under test something is if shift in the phase occur you using this phase shifter we need to adjust the same phase here so that that output will be combined here okay that will be output will be a combined this one is acting as a combiner. Means this one is about port 1, port 2, and here we will get the output that will be the port. So this one will be combined. If the phase is not same, so output will not be combined. If the phase is same, then output will be combined. And then once that phase are combined, so that will see the output on the CRO. So how much is the phase, okay, phase shifting occur, okay, how much is the phase shift occur through this device, that will be directly we are getting on this particular a phase shifter there so this one is about a measurement of a phase shift so directly we'll get that uh, how much is the phase shift by this given particular device under test there because when we are moving that a precision phase shifter there so directly we'll get the reading and that reading directly provides a phase shift that will be produced by the device under test. that is about the a measurement of a, a phase shift phase shifter so next we consider that a measurement of a impedance here. Okay, measurement of a impedance here. Now, in the measurement of a impedance, we need to measure that. For a given particular device, whichever the device we are connected, 
so what will be the impedance there okay so that that is about the measurement of a impedance so we use here a slotted line method or a slotted section here for the measurement of the impedance now the diagram for this impedance measurement is the same here okay we consider here okay we say that this one is about a source we have one is about a source whichever the source we supposed to be consider it is to be a 1 kilohertz square wave modulated signal okay that is about a modulation here takes place to so this so we have signal modulating signal 1 kilo are there then we have isolator here okay then we have a alternator okay this one is about a alternator then we consider that is slotted line or we can say that slotted line with probe carriage okay or we consider that here with probe here. okay slotted line with a probe carriage okay only in stop saying only is slotted line we consider that a slotted line with a probe carriage here. then we supposed to be consider that a load so which load we supposed to be measure that is about the unknown load or we can say that we supposed to use a, a short load there unknown as well as a short both the things are and then that slotted line probe carriage or standing wave detector is connected to the vsw armature okay this one is about a vsw armature now the same setup we have you say that the source it is about a replaced circuit it one is a 1 kilo volt of a modulation here then a isolator then we have a alternator then a slotted section with probe carriage or we can say that is standing wave detector okay standing wave detector and then probe is connected to the vsw armature that, that is tunable probe that is connected to vsw armature and then So for which particular device we supposed to measure the impedance that is about a unknown impedance device okay this one we supposed to be consider that unknown impedance here for the given particular device that device to be connected or we supposed to remove that device and then you connect a short load here so the method for measurement of the unknown impedance okay we supposed to be uh, go through this method now so now what is the unknown method Unknown impedance. That is about whatever the impedance we are connecting to the device. So generally, the equation that is load impedance or unknown impedance equation is about what one plus whatever the load reflection coefficient one minus a tau l. Okay, this one we say that one plus tau l and one minus tau l, or we can say that with respect to a zero one plus Tau L here, that is magnitude here, and there a phase now. R one minus tau L here, e raised to j by n. Now our aim is about here. This one is about the load impedance equation. Our aim is about in the equation the character impedance fifty. Okay, that is for a given particular guide. Then our aim is about to calculate that a reflection coefficient. Okay. so that for a reflection coefficient we supposed to know that what will be its magnitude as well as its phase okay so we, because it is one is a complex one reflection coefficient is a complex quantity we supposed to find out the magnitude as well as the phase then we know that reflection coefficient is nothing but what whatever the magnitude it is about a what will be the vsw of we have rho minus 1 by rho plus 1 so that will get the A reflection curve, and then a phase, a phi L, is equal to what? A twice of beta d minimum minus pi. Okay, so this one, twice of beta d minus one, and a beta here. This one is a pi. Okay, and a beta here, that is equal to twice pi by lambda. Okay, now. 
our aim is about to calculate the VSW. One. Second, our aim is about to calculate that a D minimum here. Okay. And third, our aim is about to calculate that a lambda G. Okay. So that will get the beta here. So lambda G, we know that it is about a guide wavelength. To find out the guide wavelength, we suppose to connect a short here. And then once we connect a short, then we need to find out a two minima successive point. Okay, two successive minima point. So that lambda g is equal to twice of that two successive minima point. Okay, so that will get the beta here. Then our aim is about to find out what the d minimum. So d minimum is nothing but what? When we connect a load, okay, unknown load here, and then we suppose to connect a short load there. So what shift occur in a phase when we connect the unknown load as well as the short there. So that is nothing but a D minima or we can say that a shift in a D minima. So we calculate that a D minima. Then our aim is about to find out the row here. So here a VSWR measurement already we know that how to measure the VSWR using a low VSWR method or directly VSWR meter or using the high VSWR major method. method measurement here so we calculate the vswr there okay so directly we'll get the vswr there if you put the vswr value so we'll get the a reflection coefficient then then we need to find out a two successive minima point so that's why that lambda g is equal to what a twice of two successive minima point that is about a d1 and d2 okay we consider that this one is about when we connect a load to the short when we connect the load here at the across this instead of unknown impedance, we are supposed to connect a short load, so we'll get that D1 and D2. So this way we'll get the lambda G. From the lambda G, we'll get the A beta now. Okay, next. Next, our aim is about to find out the D minimum. The position of that A minimum nearest to the load, that is about what we can say that a first minima there. And then by moving that probe along the slotted line, okay, so that's why we'll get that minimum here. So that value is nothing but a, a D minimum. So now to find out the D minimum, we need to consider that what will be the D minimum when we connect a short circuit load here and we're supposed to connect a, uh, we can say that a unknown impedance there. Okay, so exactly first minima, we need to find out using a short circuit guide and then measure the D minimum there. And then whatever the short, we supposed to consider that a device that is about an unknown impedance, okay, that whatever the load, and then we supposed to find out the minimum there. So means two methods are there. First, we need to find out the minima when we consider that a line terminated by this unknown impedance. First, we need to find out the minima when we are, our line is terminated with unknown impedance and another minima when we replace that unknown impedance by a short then you find out the another minima there and so that we will get that a two minima point first minima point through the unknown impedance another minima point through the a short load there and then we need to find out okay a distance between that two minima that is nothing but a d minima okay so for that purpose we first of all we calculate that what will be the a d minimum first using the short load here so we suppose to consider that diagram here we say that this one is about your a load plane now this one is about a load plane here and on this particular load plane we supposed to find out a short here this one is about a short point okay draw here Okay, likewise. So we say that this particular point here is a short occur. When we consider that a short, okay, so when we consider this one is about a short here, so then we need to find out the unknown impedance. We need to connect the unknown impedance, and then from that unknown impedance, we need to find out that where is the first minimum occur. That is a towards the generator. Okay, first minimum occur towards the generator so here 
I suppose to consider that draw here. Okay, now, so this one is about what we can say that a first minima. Okay, this one is about a what we can say that a first minima toward the generator. This one is about a first minima toward the generator. Now, our aim is about to find out the distance. What will be the shift in the minima occur? That is called as a D minima. Shift in the minimum. Shift in the minimum is what? Here, we are getting the two minima. One minima, because this one is nothing but a minima. And this one is nothing but a minima. So we need to find out a distance between the two minima. That is about first minima because of this short load and another minima because of that unknown impedance. And that whatever the shift of the minima occur, that is nothing but a D minimum. This one is about a shift in a minimum. Okay. Shift in a minimum is nothing but a, a D minimum. Either we can consider that this one. Okay. Generally, I this one is about a same distance. Okay. So I draw here. I need to draw. So this one is about a distance between the two shift minima. We need to find out and then we calculate that a D minima. Here. Okay. So that is about what we can say that from the load end. Okay. This one toward the load and this one is about it toward the source or a generator okay this one is toward the source or a toward the load so we supposed to find out that a distance between the a two minima okay distance between the two minima and then we find out that shift in this minima so will that is nothing but a a d minima and then from that we will calculate that a Pi L that is about it twice of beta D minimum minus pi. Okay, that is about what we can say that a measurement of impedance here. Find the shift of that voltage minima either toward the termination end here. Okay, so instead of that, we say that uh, this measurement, okay, no problem here. So we can measure this one. Okay, so toward the generator or uh, toward the mode. If supposed to be considered that this one, so this will be pi minus this one. If supposed to be considered this one, this will be this minus pi here. Okay, nothing. Here. Okay, so this equation we supposed to calculate that and through that we will calculate the okay, uh, impedance measurement. So, here in the impedance measurement we supposed to use a two, uh, two component. One is about the imp impedance measurement of, uh, of the unknown device. So, that's why unknown, unknown device is connected. We supposed to find out a minima first through the short and then minima through the unknown impedance then the distance between that two minima and that will get that a, a d minimum point shift in the minima that is nothing but a two minimum point so that is all about what we can say that a measurement of a impedance then a, another component that is about the measurement of a s yes parameter okay so measurement of a in a s yes parameter here so in that case what we supposed to consider that how to measure the S yes parameter value? So we can measure using the CRO. Is uh, we can use a vector network analyzer and then we can measure the uh, parameter S yes parameter there. If we have, if we doesn't have a network analyzer, then we can use a, a CRO and then we supposed to apply that how much is the input voltage at a given particular port and through that given particular port we supposed to calculate that. Okay, what will be the uh, uh, yes, okay, that uh, yes parameter there for the given particular port. So now we suppose here to find out the yes parameter for the a, a magic key now. Okay, so we'll see that yes parameter in a magic key. Uh, that is that a magic key, it has a, a four port here. So we supposed to consider that if four port here, we supposed to use that. That is about yes. This one is about E plane T, E plane, and this one is about a H plane. Okay, so this one is about a E port, is about H port, and this one is about a port one, port two, port 
three, four, four. That is about a yes parameter of the a magic. So with this, uh, we stop here. So we'll continue the yes parameter next session here. We stop here now.